Oh man, oh, you know what? I've actually, I may, I've had, I had some poached eggs for breakfast, and I'm feeling a bit full. So if I'm not up to my usual energy, then oh, if, if we hear any noises, your end, we'll oh, know why. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't, because that's <laughs> probably not far from the truth. Don't, I can smell it through my mic. Oh, <laughs> that's such a gross thing to say. <laughs> Said by uninteresting people. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Interesting Things Said by Uninteresting People, where we talk about interesting things so that you don't have to. My name's Ben, and as always, I'm joined by the far more algorithm aware half of the podcast, Tom. Hello. How are you, mate? Yeah, not too bad, thank you. How's Ben? I'm really good, mate. I'm really good. I mean, again, in our typical fashion, we've had about half an hour of chat. Yeah. <laughs> You guys are just getting the footnotes now. Me and Ben have we've shot the shit, put Mate, the world to and, rights. And this is available on our Patreon site, the first half hour of the podcast, <laughs> for a small monthly fee. For a mere £25 a month, you can I hear. I think that's very reasonable, mate. It's the photos well, of you as a baby that really sell it. But Oh, God, yeah. I mean, you know. that was very generous of you. But <laughs> Yeah, a mere, and open to anyone, Randy. Anyone <laughs> with, like, you know, money just flying around, don't know what to do with it. Why not? Why not get the first episode, the first ten minutes of each podcast? <laughs> the good Randy. bits, the good yeah. bits. Dude, what um, what's been going on? What have you been up to? Um, been a busy boy again, but have been doing lots of lots of fun bike review stuff, which has been great. Um, playing lots of Google Stadia on the old iPad, which oh, is a bit cool. Of, bit of a flash um, forward to uh, bit of a flash bit of foreshadowing yeah. to later in the episode. <laughs> um, and that's about it. Do, do you know what I have? Do you know what I have been really enjoying recently? Um, I bought a second camera for the channel, which has been, which was like felt like quite a large expense because it was quite a large expense. Sure. And I am denied about it for a really long time because like, I don't know if it's, you know, would I really get my use out of it? Is it really worth spending uh, six, seven hundred quid on? But yeah. I must admit, it has been bloody ideal. I, but I've used it like pretty much every single project. And I'm using it way more than I thought I would. So that's yeah. been awesome. That's been really helpful as well. So Is it, is it good as just, a, just as a general all-rounder or is there something that's specifically... It, the screen at for? the back flips up so I can see myself in the camera because usually my normal camera doesn't. It's just like got a fixed back screen. So I just, have to, I just have to line it up and put a little monitor on top and then you have to disconnect the monitor so it will read your face because for some reason it can't read your face and have a monitor plugged in. It's really frustrating. Oh, man, so close. So, yeah, <laughs> so, so close. close. <laughs> but um, this one just flips up and then the second it's plugged in, this is the one I'm using right now, actually, it just yeah. draws a little box around my face and then that's it. I'm good to go. I just okay. leave it. That's, this is where I, the, what you're seeing right now is pretty much, I, it's just there all the time. So when I want to record, I just hit record and it's like yeah. good to go. Don't have to set anything up. It's bloody I was thinking, ideal. Mate, this, is, this is looking like just a roll from ear to ear here. Yeah, <laughs> I feel like I'm in bite review the channel. Yeah, that's it. I haven't I haven't got any lights set up, but yeah, this is it's pretty much it. You know, there's not much more to it. <laughs> but yeah, man, it's good. Sorry, that, that's enough about me. How have you been? Oh, mate, no, dude, I'm all right. I'm okay. Um, yeah, work work is, has dropped off a cliff to a certain extent because of <laughs> the oldies uh, waiting to get their vaccines and you know and, and obviously everything else is going on. So Fair it's, it's uh, I've got a bit more free time on my hands. But have you, you know, just had the have you, have you had the is it the Pfizer vaccine you've had? I did, I did, I had the Pfizer vaccine not too long ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so um, have you had your second jab yet, or is it just no, no, I haven't. Um, and you know what, I've got a, I have got a wondering. Yeah, could be cynical, but yeah. I wonder whether I'm going to get my second jab in time, right? Because uh, when we, <coughs> you're right. <laughs> Just sneezing off mic there. <laughs> Won't make a big deal of it. It's fine. No. Um, when they when they give you the vaccine, they give you a little bit of paper that says that just just outlines the um, like a few. Obviously, they give you a couple of bits with the details of the vaccine you're getting. But they also sure. say they have like a, a quote uh, or some discussion from someone in the know saying it's far more useful for us to vaccinate everyone once than to vaccinate some people twice. Sure. So, you know, they use the example of if you've got two doses of the vaccine and two grandparents, it's better to give each grandparent one dose than to give one two doses. Because they're sure. saying, you know, you, you get a quite high 
uh, quite a high immunity rate just off one dose. And I can't help but wonder, man, because I mean, they're already talking about mixing and matching different, uh, different versions of the vaccine, different makes, if you like, of the vaccine for the second yep. dose. I wonder if they're kind of just preparing people for the idea that the vaccine might run out or the supply might be interrupted or slowed down a bit. Yeah. Um, and they might start prioritising giving first doses to more people rather than following up with second doses. I don't know. I did, yeah, I, I know what you mean. I did read about that, that they were saying it, it's better to get more people most, more people mostly immune yeah. than a, a small amount definitely immune. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't. The problem is, I, I don't really know enough about vaccines or that mm. to, to have a solid opinion. But no, well, I think I think the half the problem, mate, is that it, both arguments are right. You know, both arguments. Yeah. You know, is, is it a waste of time giving people the first dose if you're not going to give them the second dose in time, mm. uh, or is it a waste of time to to vaccinate half the country instead? Of, uh, yeah, yeah. There's. I think that's the trouble. Is both ways have scientific thinking behind them, but yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll get what I'm given, I suppose, at the end of the day. Yeah, you all, mate, you've already had it, 5G. I've I know, got, man, it's it handy, all. it's handy. I'm all hooked in now, it's great. Yeah, little <laughs> antenna springing out your back. <laughs> yeah, yeah man, it's, Boris. it's these lumps Must on my back Boris. that I don't get on with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, mate, other, the lumps. <laughs> other than that, it's been good. Um, I'll tell you what, what isn't on the list, because it's, it's old news for a lot of people. Um, I've sure. only just got through watching The Mandalorian. Oh, okay. Fair uh, which which was great. I mean, I know everyone yeah. knows it's great. And mm-hmm. I know like I'm way we're way, way behind on this one. Oh, but man, yeah. yeah, man, it is it's really cool. In fairness, I only I only finished it probably what, about a month ago or something. So I, oh, I was I pretty late to it as well. Yeah. No, um well I guess we might as well touch on it. Uh did did you enjoy overall? Um I did, mate. Yeah, yeah, I did. I really enjoyed it. Yes, yes. I like the style of it, I like the feel of it. Yeah, man. Sure. I probably enjoyed it more than I enjoyed the the last uh, Star Wars film, I would say. Yeah. Just because it feels a bit more different. I, do you know what I thought the whole time I was watching it? And this is an exceptionally l- like late uh, hot take. Is like It feels <laughs> like the best, the best... It's like nice to have some good Star Wars. You know, it's like yeah, it's been the yeah. best bit of Star Wars since Rogue One. Rogue One was great. Okay, yeah, yeah. The three, the three new films. I, I like the first one. I think the first one's pretty good, but the sure. second is just... And the third one is like trying to raise a corpse. Like, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not a huge fan of those last films. But then I've also got to remember that Star Wars is a family show. Like, do you know, it always has been. Yeah. I think a lot yeah, of yeah. like, oh, it should, should mature of its age. It's like, no, the first Star Wars, like, are you? It wasn't even a PG. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, I don't know of the mandalorian behind the scenes stuff no oh no i have I, sorry yes i've seen like the big screen they use instead of a green screen oh but like have you watched the the actual series oh no 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 i haven't i saw it i did see it like on the d- on the list i mean that's kind of interesting that's that's worth a watch um and, and just, it makes me think of it because one of the, the throwaway comments in that is when john favreau is saying we need to remember this is a kid's show you know star yeah. wars is always star wars is for kids you know, it's for yeah. people of all ages. Yeah. Um, mate, that's, that's worth a watch. If you like seeing John Favreau constantly talking over people because he's got something <laughs> more interesting to say, then yeah, <laughs> then yeah, you'll really enjoy it. No, it is, it is genuinely interesting, especially from a, like, from a filmmaking point of view. It's, that's uh, cool. Yeah, it's cool. But no, mate, it's nice, it's nice to see, even if it is a smaller part of Star Wars, it's nice to see it being like, oh yeah, no, it, it can really be very good. Yeah. Like the world is vast and it's it's ripe for new stories. So I'm always, like I say, I'm not I'm not massively invested in Star Wars, but if if there is some Star Wars stuff to watch, I'll probably watch it. Yeah, but I'm not going to go back and watch like the kids Clone Wars show and stuff, even though it's <laughs> supposed to be really good. It's supposed to be excellent. Mate. It's supposed to fill in a lot of the lore as well. But yeah, I, one of these days I'll get to it. No, just to, just to tail up, you know, and spoilers for uh, people that haven't seen it. What what did you think of the, the very end? You know. Uh, the, I think is it as a spoiler at this point? Uh, yeah, I think yeah, we can probably talk about it now. Yeah, can't we? so so where Luke shows up? Yeah, I thought that it didn't look as good as I was expecting it to look. Sure, it, it's really hyped up, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, I, I yeah. I mean, I'm, I don't know. I sometimes have to really stop myself from just being snidey and kind of oh, that's yeah. not very good. You know, look at that floor there. But man, he really did look quite stiff 
sure. and quite like I'm just going to move with my mouth. You know, the, yeah, the yeah. face is completely frozen. Dude, the thing it, is, when he's on screen, mm. you can just see their budget go ding, 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 ding. Yeah. It's like, we've spent all the <laughs> yeah. money on this. So <laughs> every second of screen time is like two grand. Oh my God. <laughs> or yeah. even more. Mate, I, I actually really like, I really like the scene where he came back and I said, anyway, so we're not going to really talk about this, but I, I thought the way they show Luke destroying all these things is like, that's quite, Luke's never shown as being like out of control really in those first no, sure. episodes. And he, I think he holds that. It's very calculated and I think up until the end when he crushes one of the force, that's the only bit where he kind of shows off. Yeah, He's like, oh, sure, I'm not even yeah. going to fight you, I'm just going to literally crush you. Um, but no, I, I really liked it and I think I saw Mark Hamill tweet and he said, thank you so much for basically bringing Luke back because he didn't like the direction they took Luke in the films. Oh, okay. He said, he said it was like a Christmas present he never knew he wanted. Thank you so, thank you so much to John Favreau. Oh, uh, cool. Cool. Really that's nice. really good. That's good to know he's happy with it, man. That's yeah. Good. But yeah, Mandalorian's cool. <laughs> Mate, yeah, so that was that was a complete side tangent that we never mm. even meant to get onto. Um dude, we've got so many small little things to talk about. Um just I don't know whether you've seen any of this, but I, I wanted to talk, chat to you about it just because it is kind of I think it fits within our wheelhouse of things to talk about. Sure. I was not aware of the discrimination within tiktok oh i've not heard about any of this so you're gonna to have to go okay so so bring me the news yeah i mean i'm not you know not that we're an overly political uh chat no, but i think i think in terms of tech use it is weird that it's happening okay. uh so basically so tiktok have had a f- have come under fire a couple of times i think it was and this is this is me coming into it like i, I found out a couple of days sure. ago and i've just been reading it so i'm not yeah maybe i'm not 100% clued in here, all right? But, but <laughs> you know, like, but I, I've got some ideas, though. Yeah. Um, no, it's, 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 it. really, it's really scary, though, mate. It's really scary, just even just on the face of it. So last year, I think it was, um, TikTok had a memo leaked for, uh, a, like, a company memo of what to not show to new people. In fact, let me just see if I can find it in the next five seconds. Well, to new, like, new uh, sign-up people, people that have just signed yeah. up. Yeah, it's the it's the ugly content policy. Oh my uh, God. So yeah, so basically what they what they won't just you just what they won't promote TikTok with essentially. So this sure. is back in March of last year, right? Yeah. So new rules, uh here we go. These these are the things that aren't allowed. Abnormal body shape, chubby, have obvious beer belly, obese or too thin. Not limited to dwarf and acromalagy or acromalagily. I I'm sorry, I don't know what that is. Um <laughs> Uh, next one is ugly facial looks, uh, not limited wow. to dis- disformated face, fangs, lack of front teeth, senior people with too many wrinkles, obvious facial scars or facial deformities, uh, oh, not yeah. limited to eye disorders, crooked mouth disease and other disabilities. Uh, the shoot- this is- So that's what the people can't look like. Right. We've got here, the shooting environment is shabby and dilapidated, such as not limited to slums, rural fields, in brackets, rural, beautiful natural scenery could be exempted. Uh, dilapidated housing, construction sites, etc. Uh, for Whoa. internal housing character background, which has no obvious slummy character, only those cases are specified should be labelled crack on the wall, old and distributable decorations, extremely dirty and messy. And it's saying like, so, so then it have reasons for that, like the kind of environment is not that suitable for new users for being less fancy and appealing. Wow. Uh, it's basically, yeah, basically, I mean, this is maybe in stilted English because I think TikTok is Chinese, isn't it? So, uh, yeah, it's a Chinese company, yeah. yeah. So That's maybe incredible. The, the English is a bit stilted on it, but yeah, it's... I mean, the thing, the thing is, you know, we talked about like Facebook and Twitter showing you your version of the truth. Yeah. They, that's kind of like that, but their version of, of what I know, man. the truth is and what well, the creators are like. It's, it's funny. I'm sorry, man, not to get, I'm, I'm distracting myself here, but just reading their, their justification for the, 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 what you can't look like. I think what it basically boils down to is that the, what, the way they justify it is that it should be the content of the video is the main focus, not you. Right. So if you had a third eye in the middle of your forehead, then yeah. their argument is, no, everyone's going to be looking at that eye. Not sure. the, the the crazy dance you're doing, uh, but dude, that's I mean, rough, isn't it, man? Yeah, that's it's really rough. rough. Maybe I won't join. Bloody hell! I mean, because because <laughs> lately, basically, the reason this came up lately is there's a lingerie brand. Uh, is it what's the lingerie company called? Is it Adore Me? 
Uh, right. Yeah, Adore Me. Basically, they're, they're a lingerie brand who who uh, push, you know, they're, they're, a lot of their models are plus size. They've got, you know, um, d- various different disabilities, if you like. They've got sure. um, like um, prosthetic limbs and that sort of thing. So they're, so they're very inclusive as a lingerie brand. Uh, yeah. And they're saying it's really weird, but a lot of our posts are either getting removed or like shadow banned on TikTok. Wow. That's uh, and really they're, dumb. And they're, what they're doing is they're point. And the trouble is, a lot of this comes down to race as well. I know a lot of um, black content creators have said, "No, TikTok just hides all our stuff." Um, like Black Lives Matter, like hashtag Black Lives Matter on, on TikTok has got like zero views. That's it's mental. really weird, man. Or, or did at least it did. May it's it's like you know, especially with places like China. Not that I know that any of their anything about them but it seems like that sort of stuff could possibly fly okay mm. and they could get away with it yeah you know it's like in russia you you can you can be gay but it's pretty much universally not allowed do you know what i mean yeah. like they they do not like it and i'm sure if a company outlined something and they're saying we don't show off you know gay content or something then the government would probably just be like yeah it's fine yeah fair, fair your choice yeah. yeah yeah so bloody hell but that that's really awful because you can't help you can't help your environment all the time i know you can't man. help who you are all the time and but if what's weirdest for me is like i know i know you know like the the cosmic brain memes or what have you but the, the next the next level of thinking up from this is that yeah. you've already got an algorithm that can identify most popular content sure so you don't need to have guidelines of what to show people no, necessarily you can just have what's most popular because then the people have spoken do you know what i mean well, like yeah. if, if yeah, you're yeah. trying to entice new people in you can show them what you know hundreds of thousands of people have already liked yeah that's what i'd imagine it would do like if you joined up it's like yeah. okay well here's here's the top posts for this month yeah here's the top posts of all time what else it's do you like, like it's like dude shout i mean for those who don't know like shadow banning is is where uh, uh you say youtube has been accused of it. Instagram has been accused of it where it's not necessarily removing your content, but it's just quietly not showing it to people. Yeah. You know, so, so, so you don't, it, it yeah, you don't show up in search results sometimes, that kind of thing. So <sighs> that I don't, I don't see the need for it because if people are wanting to find it, then why, well, I don't, I don't get that to be honest. It's I don't understand really bad, why you would it? want to hide some, why not just let the people decide what's popular? It's odd. Because they know better. <laughs> Yeah, right. I mean, the, the arguably the more kind of lefty cosmic brain play above that would be to go, well, actually, if there's a certain section of society that isn't being made popular by the public, then we could help to encourage sure. them in. Does that make sense? Like, so say, for example, if TikTok just turned out being a load of skinny white girls, then the yeah. TikTok might go, why don't we actively promote um, content from black creators on the platform yeah. to, to encourage more people who look like that onto our platform. Yeah. So Mate, arguably the, there is like an argument for some intervention, but yeah. only to the, promote what it perversely isn't popular. Maybe. Man, I, I bet the worst part about all of this is it will all come back round to which style of content makes us the most money. Let's push that. And yeah. if that, if that is skinny white girls or whatever else, then that at the end of the day, that's their reason. Yeah, yeah. If if we show a house when someone's got like a snaggly tooth and like a stain on the wall, no one's going to want to advertise on that. But they will want to advertise on this nice new house. And, yeah. you know, that's that's the horrible corporate machine underneath it, isn't it? See, I've never kind of got into TikTok that much. Mm-hmm. But, oh man, I just don't like it. <laughs> no, I've, I've, I've got, got to be honest. I don't, no, I don't like much about it. <laughs> I've I've got an account and I'll scroll occasionally. Um, usually, to be honest, usually when I get into bed, you know, you go on yeah, your phone. Yeah. I'm a I'm a normal person from this world. I go on my phone before bed. Yeah, Sue me, yeah. um, <laughs> and usually browse TikTok for like five five ten minutes or something. But um, I haven't made anything yet. And usually, I think my the only thing that I guess is good and bad about TikTok is the algorithm really, really leans into you. So if you like a funny video by certain something, like if you like a funny video that has a dog in it, it will show you funny videos that have dogs in it because you'll yeah, watch it. Yeah, yeah. So it's mine's quite tailored just to, you know, shit posts and memes. 
Yeah. <laughs> so like it's quite you know it's quite you know the sensible chuckle before bed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, oh yes, very good. <laughs> yeah. But um, no, yeah, mate, it's awful overall. That's a that's a zero out of ten from me for TikTok. Yeah. Like I mean, I like I say, I I'm new. I've come to this new. So there might be more to it that I'm that I'm missing somewhere, but it doesn't sound good. It really doesn't sound good. No, that is really bad. But should we talk about something more happy? Let's do uh, that. Because because man, I don't know why he's he's disgraced disgraced former uh, patron saint of the podcast Elon yeah. Musk uh, <laughs> has got a couple of interesting bits in the news at the minute, kind of tangentially. We've got to talk about the idea of putting chips in monkeys' brains. Yeah, yeah, that's mental. Mate, give us the uh, give us the context. Uh, well, well, he didn't actually. Uh, he didn't sort of talk too much about this. It was kind of like a because I think this was when old Muskie was a. a he was giving a talk regarding um, Clubhouse, which is the other thing we we're going to talk about. Sure. And he kind of just. See, I think he got asked the question, "Oh, where are you at with Neuralink?" Which we've talked about on this podcast before. The um, the yeah. idea of being, the, the technology that he's that Neuralink, the company, is working on to try and interface computers with brains. That's basically what it what it comes sure. down to i think the last we heard was that he'd managed to get a chip into a pig yeah. um well now and then he said oh yeah we've got we've got chips in monkey brains they're playing computer games he's like we <laughs> want to get them playing pong against each other that's the next step i was like that's just incredible it's mental he goes, he goes you'd never know where the chip is and the monkey's happy you know the monkey's happy and healthy they live yeah. a great monkey life it's like they've just got this chip in their brain so they can control yeah. video games Mate, this is this is horrible. But I was thinking about this. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking about this earlier. I was going to say you've obviously said Pong now, but I was like, what game do you think they're playing? Like Ape Escape, Ape Donkey Esca- Kong. <laughs> <laughs> Donkey I would Kong love Country. it if it was. Uh, yeah, don- I was going to say if it was Donkey Kong Country, get them on the old uh, on the old Star. That would be absolutely that's, incredible. That's terrible of me, but um, no, it's, it's pretty. It's pretty incredible. I sometimes I, I really wonder where I lie with that. It's like. You know, animal testing, that's pretty invasive. But if the monkey's happy and healthy, yeah, I don't know. It's like saying, I mean, oh, he took someone's arm off, but he is happy and he, he seems good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, I mean, I, not to get too much into animal testing, but I do, uh, I think it's good that we can develop new tech to help humans. Yeah. It that's feels all like I'll say about it. Yeah. <laughs> as long as the end step is we can get to help humans, then that's fine. Yeah. I mean, putting lipstick on a pig, literally putting lipstick on a pig is weird. And I, I think cosmetics, mm, um, that, that's probably not, not yeah. good. Uh, it's, it's a tough one, isn't it? Because you could argue, well, it's no different to eating them. Um, you're just experimenting. Um, yeah. And, but I don't know. I, that's a that's a tricky topic for another day. I feel like we're teetering on the edge of an <laughs> abyss here, mate. Yeah. I mean, but but look, the idea the idea that a, a, a cybernetically enhanced monkey can play a video game, yeah. if that gets closer to me having a chip in my head, man, I'm all for it. Maybe it's that vaccine talking, but man, I'm yeah. I'm all for a chip in the head at this point, mate. That is the five G talking. It needs more signal. <laughs> Get that chip in my head. Get me hooked oh, up. I, hey, hey! I, I bet I can sell you on it in, in probably one sentence. Go on. If me and you had chips in our head, we could record this podcast without having to set up any audio equipment. Right. Where do I sign Sold. up? <laughs> Done. <laughs> and we could do it wherever we like. Um, but mate, old old Muskie's uh, other other bit of news, or mm-hmm. other the reason why he's in the news with Clubhouse. I don't know yeah. too much about this, but I know you've been having a bit of a play yeah i haven't i mean i saw i haven't heard much about elon musk in clubhouse other than he went in it and it crashed the servers pretty much because everyone's <laughs> trying to join but yeah clubhouse clubhouse is a strange one so if you're not sure clubhouse is an ios only app straight off the bat so sorry ben you can't play um oh, man. <laughs> don't worry you're not missing much <laughs> um so clubhouse is like i think the best way for me to explain it would be like if you heard some people talking at a party and you went over, but you you're just listening in, you you can't like you can't really hear what they're saying, but you're interested enough to kind of just nod your head like, hmm, mm. but you can't like clubhouse means you can't talk. You, you just, it's like a live podcast. Mate, this sounds terrible. I'm sorry. Yeah, that, <laughs> that does sound terrible. Really awful. It's, um, it's like a live podcast that you can listen to if you're. You know, and the people talking can pick someone to join, which is quite cool. So say if like, 
me and you were chatting about someone and and someone wants to jump in maybe maybe dave me and like, or jared Irkin, or maybe uh <laughs> I probably like, shouldn't yeah. say their names out loud. <laughs> any, any of our fans, Ben will bleep that. I promise. Oh, yeah, um, probably. Maybe. Yeah, they're great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So if, if our friend Randy wanted to join, uh, we could just let him in for like. And you can let them in or boot them out. So you're like, oh, do you want to come in and just say what you want about that? Okay. And then you you leave, sort of thing. So it, it kind of sounds kind of cool on the surface, like live podcasts that you can listen to, and they come in at any time. Yeah. The okay. problem is, the problem is that I found with it is it's a lot of people that think they're a lot more interesting than they are just chatting about stuff now whether, whether that's Mate, just if ever there was a tagline for this podcast oh yeah there it is you know i guess i guess the thing is with this you you can uh choose to never watch it or download it yeah but but clubhouse is really notification heavy so you can obviously stop notifications but if you follow like i don't know a hundred people and they okay. all go live that day. Your your clubhouse will just be going absolutely nuts. Like join, 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 uh. join, join. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I from what I've gone on and listened to a few things, and like all the ones that I've gone on to have been like how to grow your brand a bit more, how to uh, how I got this many followers on YouTube and all that sort of stuff. It, it it's stuff you've kind of heard before. It's kind of interesting to hear people say it, but mate, it's like a podcast with no agenda. It, you know, you just people just kind of talking. But is it, but what I, I mean, I don't know specifically how it works here, but would you just join at the point you join? Like, yeah. like there's no, I mean, that sounds like a worse podcast. Like you have to yeah. start listening to it halfway through. You well, that's pretty missed... much it. Oh. It's, it's almost like the joy of live streaming though, isn't it? Like you join when it's live and it's exciting because it's live, like, and you can chime in. And from what I've seen. Uh, I haven't explored it too deeply. I don't know if there's a chat feature on the side or something. I haven't. I never looked for it, but I've never been shown it. So maybe it is there, maybe it's not. But yeah, man, I, I my experience with it was like, oh, it seems kind of cool. And then the more I kind of looked into it, the more I was just like, uh, I, I, it's just turned into another social media. You know, there's the yeah. there's the classic early risers on it that are capitalizing by asking people like Elon Musk on or whatever. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the problem is, I don't know if you saw this as well, but Elon Musk just needs to tweet about like a certain cryptocurrency and it will go through the roof. Yeah. Dude. Like Dogecoin. He just I like saw, tweets yeah. like, oh, this will be funny. And he's clearly doing it for a laugh, but watching it go up and down. So I don't know. Clubhouse for me is a bit lost. I, I don't think you're missing out massively. And I, I honestly think it's, it's very much a product of lockdown, right? Whether it's sure. been around before then or not it's people talking and you can listen in so it's tapping into that oh, i want to speak to people again sort of there must be thing. someone out there who's having an interesting conversation yeah definitely um but i don't know it feels like you know something that will probably fade away like yeah, a little sure. little fad i don't know i don't want to make any judgments you like know that, you but... know the old joke of like notice me senpai you know, yeah, where yeah. it's like, you know, where, yeah. where people on live streams, people who join in live streams are always convinced that they're going to be the one that will catch the eye of the yeah. streamer. It yeah, feels yeah. a bit like that. Like I can, I, maybe I can listen to a couple of tech giants talking and I'll, and I'll say, so I'll ask to be joined in and they'll let me in and then I'll have something really insightful to say and then we'll all become friends and then yeah, I'll yeah. start hanging out with them. It's like, mate, that's really not what's going to happen on this app. Yeah, You're going to sit there listening to a conversation. <laughs> Yeah, and it's going to go over your head mainly. <laughs> I don't know. I'd fair play to it if it does well and picks up and all that sort of stuff and people enjoy it. But as of now, I've just found it a bit blah. Okay. Well, that's a shame, man. But I mean, well, yeah. I say it's a shame. I, I, I would have forgotten all about it in a couple of months' time. Yeah, mate, it's also just another social media to, to manage. If you're, if you're running like a, a business or a personal brand or something, it's just yeah. another one to add to the list. Yeah. So I don't know. Well, mate, who knows? Who like knows? with all these things, I feel like with TikTok, with Clubhouse, man, if we, if we don't like it, that's probably going to become the most popular thing in the world Possibly, in the next yeah. 12 months. Oh, definitely. Now that, in 12 uh, months' time, we're sponsored by Clubhouse. Yeah. Come in, it's Bob coming to you live from Clubhouse. I want to say thanks to our sponsor, <laughs> Clubhouse. And what a great app it is. Um, mate, speaking of new services, I have an amazing new website. Oh yeah, go on, I, I want to hear about I this. I keep just coming back to it to see what else is on there. It's called recordsetter.com. Right. Right. And I'm going to get it up now because I need, I need some examples of things to, to show you here. All right. Oh my God, I'm excited. So 
Recordsetter.com is a website where people make videos of them setting records. Okay. Right. Now, don't, uh, no, not to get confused here, mate. This isn't your Guinness Book of World Records. You know, this isn't <laughs> anything so official as that. I don't know who officiates these records because I think, sure. to be honest, Recordsetter.com is probably the only like reference of where these records are <laughs> recorded. Okay. But what makes this hilarious? I mean, some of them on there are legit. Right. Like, I think Paramore's got a video on there because, you know, uh, was it Ain't It Fun? They, their video was them trying to break oh, yeah, as many yeah. world records in a music video. So they're yeah. on there. On, they're on recordsetter.com for, you know, most world records. Maybe that's their, like, benchmarks. Like, can you do yeah. this sort of thing? Dude. Right. Uh, longest time to hold milk in mouth. Uh, <laughs> longest time spinning a fidget spinner on big toe. What on earth? Uh, so these are useful records. Oh, man, absolutely. But, dude, that's not, they're not even the best ones. Most table tennis ball bounces on a knife in 10 seconds while carrying a child on, sol- on shoulders. Oh, man, that does not sound safe. Uh, dude, you can... This is, this is what's so amazing, man. You can, like... Because the thing is, okay, okay, I, I, I'm struggling to even know where to start on here. You can look, you can search for it by category. So I right. looked by furniture, because of course, why would you not? And we searched by decoy, because we were like, what is a decoy? And there's like, oh, it's, it's hunting decoys. It's like, it's like duck decoys or rabbit decoys. This is, one, this is one tiny little offshoot of the rabbit hole that you can go down here. Uh, and what have we got here? Uh, longest time balancing a hen turkey decoy on a pole on thumb. What on earth? Yep. Uh, mate, it feels like you could set a record just by making something up. Dude, it's like, oh, mate, that is 100% what it is. <laughs> and the best thing is, is that, for, exa- for example, under decoys, seven of the eight are held by Duck McManaman. Duck. Yeah. Doug. Doug McManaman. D- it should uh, be in Duck. Canada. Dude, there's, there's categories of like, under Star Wars, th- there's three categories. Boba Fett helmet, Darth Vader and Stormtrooper. There's what we got here, mate. Pets and animals, stuffed animals, uh, dude. You, it's it's difficult to describe just how weird this website is. So but, are you checking it between like eye appointments? So you're like, right? Oh yeah, let's see what the latest one. Is. <laughs> but dude, it's it's just so it's like a car crash, man. You can't you kind of can't look away because these people are going out of their way to make of it to hold their milk in their mouth for 23 minutes and 11.56 seconds man that's a long time like i do it's just such a bizarre insight into human nature man it really is <laughs> just because it's like <laughs> what are you doing why yeah, are you what a waste of time you know those okay what it's like is you know those business to business promotion groups or like, yeah. you know, B2B marketing where it's like, okay, yeah. Or like groups on Facebook where it's like all the local businesses in your area. And all it is, is a place for each business to go, hey, this is what my business does. There's no one in there looking yeah. to be a customer. There's only people in there looking to be the business that gets customers, right? Sure. It feels a bit like that on this site because you can, you can like, you can comment, you know, you can follow different categories. No one's following anything, mate. All it is is they want to be the guy who holds the record for most juggling balls held in one hand with palm face down. That's all what they want. What does it even mean? <laughs> it doesn't, it's, it's like, if for me, this is what, it's like peak social media where it's not even... It's not even looking for the, the respect of the other people. It's just, I want to post. I want to have posts yeah. interesting to me on this site. It makes, is, it's yeah. so weird. It's such a weird website, but it's brilliant. It's absolutely oh, brilliant. Enough. I'm going to definitely check it out. But it feels like I could be like, oh, longest time sitting in Tom Hitchens' chair in Tom Hitchens' house. Yeah, yeah. I already own that record. <laughs> yeah. No, it really is. It really is, mate. <laughs> I mean, look at this. Look at this. Most car brands identified by a two and a half year old. That, you know, that really is low. It's really bad. It's just, it's just odd. But then, That's a but low then, ball record. But dude, the, the thing is, mate, that is completely distinct from most car brand logos named by a three year old. <laughs> oh my God. What I mean, that's, that's like, look how cool my kid is. That's what that is. Dude, yeah, I mean, yeah anyway, look, look, look I, I, I want to just toe the line here between this being interesting content and me just, just getting sucked into looking at it now. Recordsetter.com. You need to check it out. It is <laughs> weird. It's wonderful. 
for Get about five there. minutes. And now, look, I'm going to close, 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 close. Right, that's it. All those tabs are closed now. So, done. <laughs> Oh man, we've got to talk about someone else. We can't talk about that for um That's amazing. There is one of the happiest things in my life. Yeah. And I mean this legitimately. One of the things that makes me genuinely feel happiest in my soul is when a genuinely good album comes out. Oh yeah. When when you can listen to it and go, Oh man, that's what it's about. That's what that's music's great. about. Not not even like a hit, like a, a new song on the radio that's good or a new song from your band that you like. That's a cool feeling. But when a yeah. new, when just a good new album comes out, that's where it's at. What do you think? We're, we're, we're of course, talking about Weezer's new album, which is called OK Human. And yeah. it's bloody fantastic, isn't it? It's very good, man. It's, it's very really good. cool. I mean, man, it's, it's difficult. Go on, sorry, you go. I was thinking it's difficult to kind of know where to start talking about it in a way. Well, I've I've got a good. Um, I was speaking to my friend Jack. Told me about this because I I was texting him because he's a fan, and I was like, "Oh, Weezer's new album's great." He's like, "Yeah, it's awesome." Apparently, it was it was recorded in like 2018, like all of the instruments or all yeah. of the 2018 or 2019. So all of the because it's got like uh, orchestra sort of sounds in it as well. I don't know if they're real or if they're uh, you know programmed. Not sure. Um, but yeah, the whole album had been recorded for a little bit and then Green Day invited Weezer on this Hella Mega tour, which we had tickets to, uh, which yeah, was like yeah. a sta- stadium tour of uh, Fall Out Boy, Green Day, Weezer. Um, I think that's it. But yeah, you know, so big stadium tour. Um, at the time, Weezer were like, oh, it's not the right time to put that album out then because it's not really a stadium filler. So they started a, a new album called Van Weezer. I don't know if you saw That's any it. of that. I did. I did. I did. I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with this. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's, those couple of songs they put out, you know, I really yeah. like them. <laughs> yeah. Um, but they, yeah. So they kind of set out on this thing of making a stadium rock album, you know, inspired by Van Halen sort of thing. And it's all very much like that. Um, and then lockdown happened, you know, and all that sort of stuff. That tour got pushed off for God knows how long. Yeah. And then... Um, they came back to this album because it felt like the perfect time to put out this sort of thing. And then he wrote all the lyrics this year yeah. or last year or something. And then, you know, that's, that's kind of where the album came from. It's really yeah. interesting. I mean, for, just to say, I think it's, it's crazy interesting that a band can almost tactically write albums. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know lots of artists do it and a lot of artists from there, from there uh, sometimes it will be their management team or their PR team at least will be like, You're, you know, this isn't the right time for this song to come out for whatever reason. Yeah. But to go, hey, we're going on a big stadium tour. We should write a big stadium rock album just before we go. I mean, yeah. that's that's pretty savvy, and it's also pretty. It seems pretty fun, like pretty funny from their point of view. Yeah, definitely, man. I definitely get the impression of Weezer because um, they've got they've got so many albums anyway, and some of them come out really rapidly. Yeah. It's like less than a year new album, which is mad. I know Rivers, the singer, has also got albums on the side of full of songs. But yeah. I feel like he, he potentially just has so much content locked up in his brain or just, you know, odd recordings here, there. He must yeah. just have, he must be writing a new song all the time. Yeah, yeah. So that must be cool for them. But no, man, this, this album is, um, like I said, first time I listened, I just listened through the whole thing. And I rarely do that. If, it, if it's a new album, I listen to singles. You yeah. know, and I, I, I always find that the tail end of an album is usually a bit throwaway. Now, it might just be me. Sure, but okay. especially with new new stuff that comes out, I'm always a bit like, first half is great, it then kind of gets worse as it goes on out. Yeah, but it's I, like we've I got you've this, got you in now. So <laughs> yeah, I found this uh, this Weezer record. I just let it play, and I was like, holy crap! It, like it's pretty much every song's a solid gold. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's quite it's quite short as well, isn't it? It's about half an yeah. hour. Yeah, yeah. So short. it's it's an easy sit down and listen to. But it's but, mainly piano based instead of guitar based, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, I think because I I. I do know a bit about this because I think that was like that was like a deliberate stylistic choice. I think right. it was almost like Rivers Cuomo went, "I want to write an album like this," sure, you know, without without because um, it was. I mean, the title obviously is is reference to OK Computer, which mm-hmm. is kind of that technophobia. So it has that kind of f- that fear of the future, you know, the fear of the yeah. technological future idea through. Because I think because um, that's it, it's interesting they started writing this way before the pandemic hit in a way. Mm-hmm. Because it's almost a lot of it is more relevant now, yeah. Uh, you know, with, with like with people looking at screens, like you know, we, people mm-hmm. everyone's got their head in their in their devices and what have you. It's like, yeah, that last year, that's exactly what it was like. 
Yeah. But then, dude, it's interesting because I know he wrote um, the lyrics to the second track. Is it Alu Gobi? Yeah. Uh, where he's talking in there about how boring it is to go for a curry yeah. with his wife. You know, this is our routine. It's so dull. It's like, yeah, yeah I'd kill for that now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Come on, meal out. Fucking hell, sign me up. But yeah, dude, it's, I, don't, I can't put my finger on what it is about it that makes it feel so because it feels very intimate it feels very close yeah very kind of you i mean dude have you i don't know if you how obvious this is but like on the on the last track where the where the drummer picks up his phone halfway through the take yeah yeah it's that kind of it's a real intimate really kind of close feel to, it's a very gentle feeling album as well in a way yeah ge- gentle is probably the right word actually that's exactly what it's like it's not trying to uh, prove anything or, or poke holes or cause any you know any controversy or anything it's like here's here's a nice album yeah here's what well we're all together. feeling like at the minute yeah no it's it's really great do you know it reminds me of um a lot of like the horn sections and stuff reminds me of the beatles like do you, especially 100%. like penny lane stuff like that it's got 100%. very kind of very you know post post touring beatles so like yeah. 1965 onwards it kind of feels like that Hundred percent, dude. You are you're spot on. I mean, without getting too technical about it, but there's a lot of that in the actual like recording sound of it as well. And the vocal sound is yeah. very reminiscent of it. Um, yeah. And it, like, it, dude, it just the, even down to the drum sound, man. But it sounds, it it's like that holy grail of mixing, like holy grail of recording, where yeah. you try and make something sound big, but clear and spacious you know yeah. so rich without being thick you know yeah man it's it, a really it clean great. sounding album yeah, yeah it's like super like it's not like studio uh like it's not sterile it's yeah. like you can you can feel it's in a studio but it feels like warm oh. inviting grab you know sit down grab a cup of tea it's it's funny man you, it sorry you know you were saying about um the instruments yeah. uh, being recorded and the beatles i happen to know they did they recorded the orchestra at abbey road Oh, okay. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Neat, oh, you're, even you're, some you're of the, hearing connections there. <laughs> yeah. Even some of the um, sounds on like the piano like sound like, you know, Strawberry Fields Forever. It's got that kind of like soft, organy sort of... Yeah, It's just yeah. very, very similar. But, yeah, it's, 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 such a, it's such a good album. I've, I've been absolutely rinsing it. Yeah, yeah. I really have. It's just same. been the only thing that's been on. <laughs> Especially like, that, that... Go on, sorry. I, know, I was just thinking, like you were saying before, it's... Uh, it doesn't sound like anything they've released before, but it absolutely does at the same time. Yeah, it's 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 a Weezer album through and through, but it doesn't yeah. sound like any other Weezer album in a, in a really good way. Is that like? I mean, that must be a good show that someone's got a songwriting style. Oh where yeah, you can say that's the, definitely a Weezer song. Yeah, because the, the hooks are they're Weezer hooks. Like you can hear it. You know, you could replace the organ or whatever with a guitar and you'd be like, oh, it's just a Weezer track. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, in a way, it also doesn't have that because those songs wouldn't be possible without the piano or, or whatever. Yeah, but, sure. Um, yeah, man, it, it's... Um, oh, what was I going to say? I can't remember, but yeah, I just really like it. That I was going to say that, that Numbers track, which is... I'm not sure if it is a single. It's like the fourth track or something, but the, how the third track goes into it or whatever is really nice. But yeah. even that, that's such a good, like, pandemic-y thing to... to sing about and stuff as well just like yeah how yeah. numbers can make you feel bad and like how you know they've got a million likes and i don't and all that sort of thing so it was quite a nice sort of uh one to listen to especially for me which my na- my life now does revolve around view counts <laughs> and and likes and you know how, how things perform yeah yeah but uh, just no, remember it's, Tom, it's not a measure of how you're performing as a human being no I mean, just it, I mean, it sort of, of my, is. Uh, uh, just, yeah. It's a, I mean, it's you know, a measure you know, of your it's personal not, worth. Personal worth and wealth and gain and <laughs> can I afford the house this month? And... Oh, yeah, that's true enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, Mr. Mr. No, Mr. Hitchens, what, uh, on this mortgage application, what did you say your job was? YouTuber. <laughs> YouTuber, get out. Great, yeah, <laughs> so. <laughs> it's been declined, really strange. Uh... Oh, man. I mean, dude, I, 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 just to wrap it up, I would definitely recommend people have a listen to it. Even yeah, if you've no. been a Weezer fan for years, if you haven't, I mean, if you have, then you probably know about it. But if yeah. you haven't, then it's worth definitely oh, worth yeah. checking out. Mate, do you know what? It's, it's for the first time in a long time, it's made me think, should I buy the CD so I can just have the CD in the car? Because my, my car doesn't have a, 
a aux in or anything like that i've just got like okay. a bluetooth radio adapter which does a pretty good job to be fair but you know sometimes it's nice to just have the cd and just like just you. have yeah. it in so i've been been tempted for the first time in a really since i bought a gunship album i think first time in a long time to actually go do you know what i should just buy it and then just stick it on and leave it on wow man but that's, that's great. Good. If, if we're ever looking for a ringing endorsement the old buying the cd yeah there that's it is up there. It is fantastic. Great stuff. Mate, speaking of dead formats that we shouldn't look into, um, yeah. what's, uh, what's going on with, uh, <laughs> with Google Stadia? Okay, right. So here we go. Right, here we go. Right, okay. Right, well, prepare yourselves. <laughs> prepare right. yourselves. Um, I've been a bit of a fan of Google Stadia, and I'm not afraid to admit it. The problem is, Ben, uh, the gaming community is pretty toxic. So if there's a newcomer... <laughs> It is. If there's a newcomer to the world that's not Sony, Microsoft, or Play, or not Sony, PlayStation, Microsoft, Xbox, or Nintendo Switch, or whatever, you, or on PC, you're, you're more than likely going to be met with a lot of like, who the fuck are these guys? No, I don't want a new console and all that sort of thing. And uh, Stadia definitely felt the brunt of that, I would say, especially from Google and other big company. A lot of people already probably have their own opinions about it. So yeah, Google. Google Stadia is a streaming software. Like imagine Netflix for games. You still have to buy the games, but rather than download them, they're streamed to you. And if your internet connection is good enough, they play just as well as console games. And the the plus side is they run better, you know, because they're being run by a much better computer than yours back at home, yeah. back at Google World or whatever. That uh, you know, it's the best graphics it can be. It's the best frame rate it can be as long as your internet connection is good. And, you know, the best part about that is there's no updates, there's no downloads, there's no, there's no nothing. You just press play. And, you know, the loading times are great as well because it's being run by a beast somewhere else. Yeah. So, you know, the setup for it's cool. You know, if you, if you said to any gamer, hey, the, you know, Xbox this time is, is you don't have an Xbox. You just have a controller and you go to the app on your TV and you press Xbox and then your Xbox loads up. You know, who who wouldn't want that? Yeah. So you don't you don't have to worry about this. You don't have to worry about buying a big thing. You just pay monthly for an Xbox or a PlayStation or whatever. It's kind of what Stadia delivered. Stadia's game library is pretty poor. I'm going to say that out the bat. <laughs> Fair and, enough. And to, and to, you know, to be honest, most consoles die, live or die on their games. If you don't have any games, people aren't going to play. You know, it was it was clear for the Nintendo Wii U. It suffered from perhaps not having yeah. the best games, you know, and any any other console that you know has failed, like uh, Sega Saturn or a Dreamcast or whatever, you know, at the end of the day, the games just weren't there to back it up or there was a much better option out there. If, you, if you're Google Stadia and you're coming to the very solid format of Microsoft, Sony, Nintendo, that's a big, you know, how on earth are you going to possibly deal with those giants of gaming? Yeah. Um, and, you know, to cut a long story short, it, it hasn't particularly. It didn't get the... I don't think it ever got the... It didn't didn't have a killer game for people to go, oh, I need Stadia to play this. Yeah, like, sure. you need an Xbox to play Halo. You need a, a Sony... You need, you need a PlayStation to play Last of Us. You need Nintendo for Mario. They've yeah. got the very clear reasons for buying, but Google Stadia never did. And all the games that are on Stadia are available everywhere else anyway. Yeah, sure. Anyway... That's enough context. I've been playing it on. I've been playing it on my <laughs> iPad. <laughs> it, yep. it just came. It just came to iOS, which is really cool because Apple are very particular about how things can come to play on iPhones or iPads. It comes through the web through Safari, so it's not technically coming through the, the App Store or anything like I'm that. I'm with you. So it's, yeah, yeah. It's kind of like a almost like a backdoor that Apple allows, I guess. But yeah. Anyway, I've been I've been playing it on my iPad. Um, video goes live on it today. Excellent. You know, a little yeah, plug there. Yeah, yeah. But um, you probably may have seen it already. Uh, who, who knows or cares? Um, <laughs> that's anyway, the spirit. That's anyway, <laughs> <laughs> that's the spirit. It's, uh, it's been really fantastic, though. That's what I wanted to say. It's been awesome. I played, I played through Cyberpunk on my Xbox One X, and it, ba- it basically barely handled it. I got through it, and I completed it, and I enjoyed it. But playing on Stadia is like, wow, this feels like I'm playing on an absolutely beefed out PC. Really? You know, incredible graphics, quick loading times, combat runs smooth as a anything. And my Xbox, it would slow down horribly. Okay. Um, so, you know, the promise works. You know, my internet speed's really average. It's like 55 megabits per second. It's not like, okay. it's not mind blowing. Out of you interest, know, out of interest how much do you, 
pay for Google Stadia? Um, so this is a good question because I'm on my friend's family stream for it. Okay. So I technically don't pay a penny. Yeah, so it's enough. a bloody bargain <laughs> for me, Ben. But this is another thing which I think Stadia doesn't quite hit on because you, you have to pay a monthly subscription mm-hmm. for Stadia for, or for Stadia Pro. Um, and then you have to buy the games on top. So it's like £10 a month plus if you buy Cyberpunk, it's like 50 quid. Wow. And okay. you obviously don't get anything for that. You just get access to it you don't get like an official download it's just access to that game so i think there's a lot okay. of discrepancy there and people seeing what what is so, worth money so when you when you balance up the cost it's almost like you need to balance the 10 pound a month against a buying a yeah. system rather than That's buying it. the games but there is okay. a free version there is a free version of stadia um but you're limited to 1080p and uh you don't get any of like the cool benefits it's, it's worth paying 10 pound a month because you get like destiny 2 and a bunch of other games free every month. Okay. So you, you kind of, you know, and you get 4K capabilities and all that sort of stuff. So it's worth paying for in that regard, but you can do it free. Um, but yeah, I just want to say it's been, it's been really excellent on my iPad. I've been really, really enjoying it. I played through, played a bit of Cyberpunk, played Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is the new one, which honestly, like I said this in the video, I played that to test what the open world is like because those games are like vast massive sprawls of stuff but the graphics on that game on stadia are absolutely incredible wow like okay. mind-blowingly good like it's funny because it's set in england the valhalla yeah yeah uh, and you're like a viking sort of person but you start off in norway and you're like oh i can't get much more beautiful than this yeah and you go to england and it looks better and i'm like this isn't the england i know <laughs> and i live here it's miserable yeah. <laughs> this is what i wish england looked like <laughs> yeah but no it's like you know, they show it in the best light. Like, it's like England on a beautiful, like, summer's day sort of thing. It just looks stunning. But, yeah, sure. my gosh, it looks incredible. But um, all of this aside, basically, my takeaway is it's great, really cool. It's a perfectly cool way and adequate way to play games if your internet speeds up for it. Yeah. And the best thing is you can carry on where you left off. So if you've got it on your TV, you can play it on TV. But then if you're on a train trip, you can play it on your train journey, on your phone or whatever. Sure, yeah which is cool, which you can't get with an Xbox. You know, you can get with a Switch, sort of. Yeah. Well, no, definitely you can. But um, anyway, oh, right, that story aside, it's good. It's that's, cool. That's cool. <laughs> so, it's, so, um, so with that background, um, where, like, cause what's happening to it, though? Because it's changing, isn't it? Like, it's, there's yeah. some, it's, not been, it's not been having the best of times lately. No, not at all. And I think I think a lot of gamers be like, "Yeah, told you so," sort of thing, and that's fine. I think the um, so basically, Stadia, Google have shut down their internal games development for Stadia. So when they announced Stadia, they said we're going to make games for it as well. We we started a mm-hmm. new games company, and we're going to start making games. They've shuttered that company, so it's no longer developing games at all. Now, you could read that as that's bad news if Google yeah. themselves are no longer thinking, you know, this we're not going to push it anymore then fine. But in, in this article from The Verge, there's an article in there they've linked to Google's blog and that the vice president of Stadia basically says, yeah, we're not, we're not developing games anymore. Uh, Stadia's not going away. But in, in this letter, it doesn't make any mention of gamers, doesn't <coughs> mention anything to put anyone's mind at rest. It just says, uh, Stadia will be really important for our partners. We're hoping our partners can help you know join with us and make use mm. of stadia as a platform to deliver you know new gaming experiences and stuff so basically what they're saying is we're not trying to compete anymore because at the time they were like yeah this is it this is a new stadia think of all the stuff you can do in the cloud games can be so massive and all this sort of stuff yeah um but now they're saying you know what um don't worry about uh don't worry about developing games specifically for us but if you want to put titles on stadia still that's cool and I think the under the underlying thing of that is it's becoming a lot easier for developers to put their games on Stadia. Sure. Because I think it was beforehand they were having to pay to be on Stadia than getting a cut of, you know, monthly this and I I'm not overly sure. But it was yeah. it wasn't you know, the developers were as much customers as, as me or you. Yeah. In terms of how it worked. So it's very yeah, much so, like a third party platform. Yeah. So this Verge article basically just says the writing's on the wall for Stadia. It's probably going to turn into a white label streaming company, which basically means like Ubisoft or any anybody could just say, oh, we're going to start Ubisoft Stream. Um, yeah. You can play all of the Assassin's Creed games 
and it will cost you like two pound a month or something mm. but that will technically run on stadia just Powered under by the stadia yeah yeah that's it so it, you know i wouldn't be surprised in a couple of years time it's just it doesn't exist in the way we know it anymore which is sad i think it's really sad it is it's a shame man because you think with something like that as long as there's no reason why google couldn't have good game developers yeah do you know what i mean there's no particular they reason got the money yeah exactly they could hire whoever they want they could hire people and say look we want a triple a game yeah now please yeah. make it now <laughs> yeah what, what ideas have you got kicking around you know that it, Man, wouldn't, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't feel like it'd be a lot of work for them to bring together people who could work well together sure sure and say look they, we just need five headline titles for this new system yeah too right i may i think the uh, uh a horrible part about it as i was like i said before gaming community is pretty toxic um sure it, i think it just is it's one of the worst places and um those some of those people probably can't understand that more more people making games would not only mean more games for us to play as gamers, which is yeah. a good thing, it also means there'll be loads of competition at the top. Say yeah, if Google yeah. Stadia does quite well, and then suddenly Microsoft like, oh my god, you know, we've got to we've got to react, we've got to do something similar, we've got to we've got to push out a new IP ourselves to com- compete with this new one. Mm. You know, more competition at the top is better for us as consumers, and it will drive yeah. prices down. Yeah. It will make everything better. You know, there's no. I wouldn't say for a second it would ever outshine what's already there. But if, if it makes them go, oh, do you know what? We should actually have a bit of that pie and try some of this, and then we might yeah. get an amazing new game out of it. Isn't it funny, man? I mean, when you talk about the toxic kind of uh, community mm. around video, I mean, it's true, man, because it it's literally self-harming. It like is, you yeah. say, it's, it's mental. Now you've put it into words. It's mental to think about it like that. You know, people who really want to see a new system fail. Yeah, that's, it's I mental. Mean, why? Like, what? what? possible good does that do it, you know would you do not any want good. more good games to play it's this is where the whole like team you know uh Mike's, you know are you playstation or xbox sort of thing comes into it it's like you don't you don't need to take sides to it like i've historically been mm. more of an xbox player but i've never wished the playstation to die because i know it's a great console yeah and like it you know some of the games that come out are fantastic and if anything i've switched my tune since the ps4 because it uh, objectively was a better console than the xbox this time around mm. because of the games but i'd never wish any of those to die you yeah. know people always said our oh, nintendo are just fading out because the wii u did crap and then the switch came back like full you know yeah they're going <laughs> yeah. ham with the switch man it is <laughs> selling bucket loads but that's great I'd, ne- I'd never wish any you know even when a long time ago when sega stopped making dr- uh, consoles yeah that wasn't a, that wasn't a win for the industry no no it that really was, wasn't you know, yeah you know so i don't know I've, I've i've always since i think since the last five years have become very platform agnostic like mm-hmm. I, d- I don't mind what i'm playing on some people are still very much into that oh well i'd only ever buy a playstation i'd only ever buy an xbox and like yeah. nintendo is for kids and that sort I mean, of stuff who who are you sh- what what is that a show of strength do you know what I mean? It's like, well, who is just talk- tribalism, who is, isn't it? Yeah. Who is that for when people go, oh, no, no, I'd only ever buy an Xbox, mate. It's like, all right, okay. Yeah. That seems bad, but okay. <laughs> it's, it's funny, isn't it? But I, it's, I think it's just that old school, like, which team are you on sort of thing. Yeah. You know, who do you fight for sort of rubbish yeah, like that. Yeah. If, I, but if yeah. I say someone else is good, then what I've got is worse. Yeah, it's pretty much that. And people like to feel mm. justified in their purchases, which is, you know, we all do. You don't want to be buying something and told, oh, that was the wrong oh, one. Yeah. You want to, you want to buy the, the best one. But yeah, it's funny. But I know not everyone can, like, be platform agnostic. You might only have access to one and that's totally fine. But yeah, don't, don't slag off the others, you know. Everything's helping. Mate, just, just to, to wrap up, talking of, uh, talking of good video games, Yeah, we can finally... Oh. I mean, the, the listeners will have been wondering what yeah. what we've been wanting to talk about the last couple Mate, of episodes i'm sure i'm breath. sure they're all going oh please ben please tell us i mean <laughs> i finally finished doom eternal because i know we've been talking about this i know you've played it um front yeah. to back i have mate it's the first game in a long time that i've just really gone mate this is for me this is 100 yeah. percent for me Mate, Doom is fantastic the the 2016 reboot and Doom Eternal have just been so much fun to play it's what I, I don't know what it is it's in, in a similar kind of vein as the new Weezer it's like a breath of fresh air for me yeah. I know I know you know, everyone's got video games they enjoy I don't know why why it strikes such a chord with me I mean I, I played Doom original back in the day 
you know, yeah. Doom 2, uh, you know, made my way through Doom 3 just about. <laughs> yeah. Mate, what, what I really appreciate a bit about Doom, this reboot, and I think it's probably what's tapped into you as well, is it's, you know, maybe similar to what I said about the Wizard but it's not trying to be anything more than it is. Yeah. It's not saying, oh, here's a, here's the, I mean, there is the epic backstory if you really want to go into it, but at the end of the day, it knows its strength is shooting demons and it makes it yep. as fun as possible. Yeah, makes it as and satisfying that's all it as possible. Yeah. Oh, Do yeah. You, I mean, for, for people who haven't played it, I mean, it's, it's a first-person shooter. Mm-hmm. You shoot lots of demons, zombies, yeah. kind, of, kind of techno, organic, hellish sort of settings. Yeah. It does, it does atmosphere very well for that. It does. But, I mean, the, the guns are big and chunky. You know, they yeah. feel meaty. You know, there's, it's fast there's, as well, isn't it? It's really yeah. quick action but gameplay what I, I mean what i found great about it because I, I think i said, said this to you i decided ah you know what if i'm gonna go in i'll go in properly and set it to like the second hardest difficulty i was like ah you know yeah in for a penny in for a pound but that combined with the the system they have for for resource management yeah where it's like to, to briefly touch on it if you if you if you kill a demon with a, a chainsaw you know you get ammo back if you kill it yeah. with a flamethrower, you get armor back. So, so you have to kind of cycle through how you're approaching combat yeah. it, to keep your own resources stocked up. Yeah. Uh, which once you kind of get once you get into the rhythm of that, it yeah. makes you play faster and kind of in a more intense way. Yeah. It may, it's like it's like there's a layer of strategy to it, but, but it is combined with going as hard as you possibly can. Yeah, because yeah. you can't. There's, there's step no back ta- and think. there's no tactical combat. I mean, there's very no. limited tactical combat. Yeah, it's like right. If you go in there, you're going to need to flame for a, a few. You're going to have to at least glory kill these, and you're going to have to. At this point, you're going to have to use the chainsaw. Yeah, and you've got to do it. You've got to do all that thinking on the fly. You don't have yeah. time to think. Oh, maybe now, maybe then. And then it's another like, bigger demon will beam in. It's like, oh, for fuck's sake! I thought yeah. I, was, <laughs> I was so close to being done with this. And but mate, do, I think. What we said about it is like it doesn't try and root itself in any form of reality. You you fly no. around like you're on ice. You have got tri- double, triple, big boost jumps. You can do what you know. You, you feel do whatever powerful you want. In it. Yeah. <laughs> it is yeah. not like Call of Duty at all. I couldn't no. think of anything. It's less like it's it's way <laughs> yeah. more full on. But dude, even down to when we do like these, yeah, these these glory kill moves where you've dealt with enough damage and you can finish it off, you know, to get yeah. some health back. Uh, but but the demons always look kind of comical, you know. They yeah, go from, yeah. they go from being these scary kind of evil looking bad you know, bad dudes to all of a sudden looking at you like please don't do it. please please <laughs> no these, these weird bulgy eye kind of expressions. Yeah. I think they they definitely <laughs> capitalise on the fact like oh no I'm fucked now. Yeah like, yeah. Please don't make it too painful when you it's, like it's rip got open that, their head. <laughs> it's that kind of level of like irreverence for like uh, in your in your base where you've got you you it's a big old place to explore you know to find a few secrets yeah. and what have you but where you know the the character your the doomslayer the guy you are has like his gaming desk set up <laughs> yeah. with some crisps He's got his everywhere PC, isn't he? yeah, yeah. Dude, like the magazines on the floor you know oh, so it's, mate, the, it's kind the of the bookshelf and is fantastic it's yes. like dealing with rage yeah <laughs> the best, but it's, it's best got demons for this it's kind of got that level of that humor to it as well it's yeah. just it's like everything is just turned up to 11 it so is, it, doesn't, yeah. it doesn't have to be serious. It doesn't have to be grounded in real life. But it is, it is true to its art style. Like it's not a comical game. No, you know, it is intense and gory and kind of gritty and, and hellish. Yeah. You know, man, some of the environments are gross as well. You're just walking around on flesh. It's yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's people. Yeah, there's like yeah, there's like an eye poking out and like you know some fangs and all that sort of stuff. It's like, ooh, and then you just see when you get close, it's like, oh yeah, it's made of just human bodies. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> I, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know how much more I have to say about it to be honest, except that I really, really enjoyed it. It's it's, it's such good value for money. <laughs> oh man, it's it's they're great. I, if you haven't played, did you play the first one? Just Doom 2016. Dude, I never played Doom 2016, no. I, I would recommend just going back and playing that because it's it's basically the same. Okay. You don't have, you don't have the flamethrower, which is a shame. Um, oh. <laughs> but, it, you know, it's, it's, it is the first one. But um, yeah, there's a few different weapons and stuff. And I, I think I actually think in Doom 2016, the boss encounters were way more full on. 
Okay. Because you, you get you do get some really cool bosses in the second one, but this, the first one makes it a point of like, here's the arena you fight the boss in. Yeah, sure. You know, there's a few of them. This is going to no, be man, like a great. big event. Yeah, it's great. I'm glad. I'm really glad you enjoyed it. And like, like we're saying, it's just a fun shooter sort of thing. But it does kick your ass. You know, if, you, oh, if you're mate. not if you're not moving around, dude, it's taken me weeks to get through it, and just to get yeah. into like the like I say, the rhythm of it. You know, where you kind of go you have to push through you have to get used to being like no i'm you're constantly on like low health constantly looking for more health constantly looking for more ammo and so you have to keep like pushing through push 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 because mate then when like an encounter like ends and you and you're done my man that that relief that wave of relief of like i can't believe i've managed to get through this yeah, it plays that sort of like tone that they've all gone now. And it's like, yeah, oh, it's okay. God. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> it's fine. But it, it's, it really does. It, you're right. It really capitalizes on that fact. That it's fast and it's furious uh, gameplay. It really is. It's like full on. You can't like chill out and play Doom. It's no. like, right. Do you, <laughs> get, I mean, get me my G fuel. Without, without getting too specific about it. I mean, because, you know, because people might want to play that. I, I would encourage people, if, if you're looking for a shooter to play, it, yeah whatever kind of just try it man i think it's on you can get it on steam for like i think i picked it for 18 quid including yeah it's not yeah it's, it, on, like, it's on xbox game pass that's how i play yeah it. um i mean the first boss the first kind of bigger bigger boss that you're that you're that you're uh led up to as you're going to encounter this thing yeah you know you you fight it and it's a bit of a battle you know and then you kill it and it goes oh yeah okay fine now fight two of them <laughs> yeah yeah you know it takes you a while to get through what and then those right. bastards become like regular enemies yeah, later man, in the that game is the worst <laughs> you get do you remember that there's that demon uh relatively early on it might be the one you're talking about but he's you have to shoot it with electricity until it blows up and then he's got like tank tracks yes to, dude like, that's the one him. yes dude. yeah and it's like yeah. oh he's just regular now that so yeah you might you, you might fight two or three of them one at once yeah oh but no, you'd, the good thing is you do get that progressive more power. So you get like, I think the first the first shotgun you get can turn into an automatic shotgun and that thing rips. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you do feel really powerful going around with that. Mate, the super the super shotgun, I know we said we weren't going to talk about this for very long, but the super shotgun, once you get the meat hook for it, yep. is fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Nothing, especially if you get the, fight, the flame upgrade on it because then they start dropping armor before you even get there. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's well, great, dude, that. What, what else is that? Because you're right, man, touching on that kind of idea of you sometimes start to feel like a god playing it. You know, you have brief moments where, like, the equipment you've got and the skill you've got outstrips yeah. the difficulty. It's not for long. No, But yeah. you'll have, like, one section where you're like, yeah, I'm, I'm in charge now. Yeah, I'm fucking taking names. <laughs> but it's the way they add in, the way they've got the cheat codes added in, where, you know, you find them, you find them as secrets in the world, but then you can re play levels with whatever they're very open about it you know it's like oh yeah, yeah i'll go the infinite lives or the infinite ammo or whatever and then you can just it's as much fun to blitz through a level that took you a day to get through <laughs> regularly just just with the addition of infinite ammo and it all yeah. of a sudden it's a piece of cake because you can yeah. waste everything <laughs> with, with whatever it's, you've it's got. It's funny how like that small change can make you unbeatable. Yeah, yeah. But that's a really good sign, right? Like I was, ta- I, I know we talked about this briefly before we started recording about the idea of if you've got just extra because they have extra lives in there, you know, as yeah. part of the, as, forget cheats as part of the regular gameplay, you can pick gameplay, up yeah. extra extra lives, and it's like just that one extra little help up will have you defeat an encounter that you were banging your head against for hours. Yeah, you know, so, so I think that's a good indicator that the difficulty is set just right, where if that tiny change can just nudge it into being a lot easier, then yeah. you know the difficulty is, is just about on the, on the money. Yeah, definitely. It's a great game. It's, a, it's Ben and Tom's Wreck. Ah, oh, man, Double Wreck. Double Wreck. Oh, go out and play it. Mate, I think that's us. I think that's us done. No way. I know, man. I know. Ah, another one in the bag. No one 41. In the bag. 41. 41. We didn't really talk about our 40th episode last time, but 41 we episodes. Next, we'll, we'll do something for the 50th, I'm sure. Pro- Big celebration. Forget. That's yeah. what we'll do. Let's, let's say for the 50th one, it would be nice to do it in person again. Oh, man. Ooh. He's hoping. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers let's crossed. Let's see. All right, well, that's, that's it. We can wrap up. If you've listened this far, then, hey, thank you. Genuinely, Congrats. thanks for having a listen. Yeah, congratulations. Yeah, yeah uh, no, thank leave you. Leave a comment. 
send us a message. Where can people send you messages if they uh, if they want to? It's at Bite Review all over the place. But where can they find Ben? Uh, I am at Benji One Lung. That's it. Done. We see you next time. Stay safe. <laughs> Bye. Save lives. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>